Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he will not surrender to pressure amid growing calls for him to agree to a deal to end the conflict in Gaza. The Israeli Prime Minister spoke against the backdrop of the largest protests his government has seen since the outbreak of the war in Gaza on 7 October as anger over the failure to get hostages home safely intensifies. Netanyahu also vowed that Israel will not give up control of the Philadelphia corridor in Gaza, a narrow piece of land in southern Gaza which leads to its border with Egypt, which he described as Hamas's lifeline. At least more than millions of people are estimated to have taken to the streets of Israel on Sunday to express anger at his government's failure to secure a ceasefire deal after the six hostages were found dead in an underground tunnel in Gaza on Saturday. To further discuss this, I'm joined by EJK Okwa, his uh, global affairs analyst. Good evening, EJK. Thank you for joining us at this time. Well, thank you for having me. All right, so what are the key sticking points in the negotiations between Israel and Hamas, and uh, how can they be addressed to achieve a ceasefire deal? You know, the, uh, this, this conflict started uh, October 7, uh, 2023, and we were hoping that, you know, within a matter of months, uh, it was going to come to an end. But, you know, we are a month or so away from it being uh, in this first anniversary and we, nobody has an idea when it's going to come to an end and what's going to make it come to an end. Uh, Netanyahu is a warmonger. Uh, all the time he has been a prime minister. That's what he has always done. He loves conflict. He loves to flex the muscle. Uh, I'm not saying that Israel doesn't have the right to defend itself. Every nation does. But, you know, when it comes to uh, the senseless killing and the destruction of properties, uh, what time does humanity prevail over our own egos? The way we said, okay, fine, you know, no loser, no, you know, no, no victors, no vanquish. Mm. Uh, let's get, a, you know, let's, let's resolve this stuff. Everybody has the right to live. But, you know, in the case of Israel, Israel decides what Israel wants to do. And Israel is emboldened because of the support it gets from America. And now that we're in a presidential election where, you know, the president is not running and the president is, you know, totally ineffective, uh, just, you know, watching the clock for his time to come up so that he can, you know, get out of the presidency. Nobody, you know, nobody is going to say anything to anybody in the world. Uh, especially from the American point of view, and that's going to make them do anything. Okay. So, uh, if in Netanyahu is talking about there's a pressure, the question needs to be asked: Who is putting the pressure? Is it the candidates running for president in America, or is it you know pressure from who? Uh, but you know he has to say what he has to say to always be in the news, to always say I'm going to do what. All I want. right, educate. Now, what about the Philadelphia corridor? How does the control of that corridor in Gaza? impact the whole uh, dynamics of the conflict. Uh, what are the implications well, of Israel's refusal to give it up? Well, I mean, he's identified, Israel has identified it as the pipeline or, or the lifeline for the, for the uh, you know, Hamas people or the Palestinians. So he, if he's able to shut it or control who goes in and goes out of that particular uh, strip, or a piece of land, and then, you know, he, he he's going to flex his muscle. Remember, in a war, it's not just the person using the gun. It's also they're going to try to stifle your source of supply. And, and so since, you know, a lot of things is alleged to come from Egypt to, to, the, to the Palestinians through this strip of land, he wants to get control of it. He wants to put his forces over there and make sure that what he, he what comes in is what he lets in there. And, and, and so, you know, is the whole thing about Israel since, you know, the formation of uh, Israel as a nation in 1948 has been what it is. You know, there have been uh, Nobel Prize winners for peace for those things, but we haven't gotten peace. Uh, you know, Israel or Jerusalem or, the, you know, this, the, the geography of contention is where Jesus was buried or Jesus was born. And I always wonder, Jesus, if you are this powerful, how come you haven't prevailed and sent these people something, some magic wand?
Mm. So we can have peace. Okay. So obviously, Jesus is not that powerful. I know, don't want to offend anybody. I'm just saying this is a human factor. Uh, because the contention is where is Jerusalem, who owns what piece of land, and you know, all of that other stuff. And all the world leaders that have sought publicity, you know, some of these purely stunts, you know, just go over there and say what it is. And when they leave, you know, the, the fight continues. And, and, and so uh, of all the countries in the world, nearly 200 countries in the world, Israel is one that has become what Israel has become because America supports it. If America support for Israel is to win, maybe Israel will think twice. But as long as that support for Israel is by America, mm. it's not going to change. Okay. Well, thank you so much, AGK, for speaking to us at this time. Thank you for having me.